All right, here we go. We're starting out with my five favorite scenes to test out your home theater setup from the Alien franchise. And starting out at number five is gonna be from Alien Resurrection, which is the underwater scene. I love this scene. Uh, I, I love this from the moment I saw it when I was growing up, when I went to the theater to see it. This scene, starting when they're in the dining hall area with the cooling towers, you get a lot of ambient noise from the water swirling in and coming into the actual area that they're standing in. And then they dive under the water and then you get, you know, underwater sound effects. And then the aliens come up and the music comes in. And then eventually Ron Perlman shoots, you know, his little rocket launcher gun and you get a cool noise of the rocket grenade kind of sliding through the water. And then it hits the other alien and makes kind of a cool underwater explosion sound. <laughs> And then following that, uh, when they kind of climb up the ladder with all the alien eggs and everything, again, you get a lot of cool ambient sound of the kind of like sparks falling down and just kind of the pipes and the steam and the water kind of swirling. The score kicks in and then you get Ron Perlman again kind of hanging down doing his backwards thing when the alien jumps up and starts shooting his guns and you get this cool shot in this cool like audio experience of him shooting his guns at the alien. Finally he hits the alien, the head explodes. They, uh, Christy, you know, cuts himself loose. He falls in the water. And then of course to top it off, a little bit of comedic humor of course, Ron Perlman does this. Ah! So yeah, so starting off my list at number five is the underwater scene from Alien Resurrection. Now we're on to number four, which is gonna be a scene, or technically two scenes, I guess, back to back, that are grouped uh, in back-to-back -back chapters on the Alien 3 DVD, which is basically the conclusion of the final chase sequence when they're trying to lure the alien into the mold and into the press. Now, I love Alien 3 for its music because it's so different than all the other Alien scores. It has this like industrial kind of sound to it. And it really kicks up during the chase sequence and towards the end of this chase sequence when they're trying to get the alien into the mold. These scenes here are especially good because they finally kick on the mold and you hear all the sounds of all the presses and the engines and the pistons firing up and the mold coming through and the score kind of kicks in and you hear all this noise and ambientness. Of course, then it gets pressed into the mold and Dylan has arguably, in my opinion, one of the coolest death sequences in any of these movies. And that's he takes on an alien one-on-one -on -one with his hands, which is just, that's awesome. That's badass to do something like that. Everything just kind of swells they dump the mold, everyone cheers, you get this kind of like heroic music score, and then the alien jumps out, and it's still alive, and then the score again changes. They hit the sprinklers, you get this cool sprinkler sound effect and the real melodic, almost dreamlike noise that plays with the sprinklers. Then you get again more of the alien uh, noises as the skull cracks and then explodes. And so anyways, I love the sound and just the ambient noises and everything of that final chase sequence at the end of Alien 3. To be honest, as a side note, outside of one other scene that I remember from my youth growing up watching the VHS tapes, the scene at the end of this movie, the whole chase sequence into the press and into the mold, was one of the most played out sequences, if you will, of me and my sisters and my cousin when we were younger and we would play aliens and we would play with our toy guns and do all this stuff, we would always pretend that the alien was chasing us on the ceiling and the walls and that we were running trying to get away from it in the mold and in the press. So yeah, so it, it holds a lot of nostalgia and value to me, but it's also a very good high quality scene to test out your surround sound system 
on this list. Two of these top three scenes I'm gonna talk about are probably my most favorite scenes of maybe any movie I've ever watched and definitely of the Alien series. Coming in here at number three, this is gonna be from Aliens. This is the Marines final stand coupled then going into the tunnel chase sequence. As the scene starts, you get the motion tracker noise. How could they be coming in if the doors are barricaded and all this stuff? You get the countdown with Hudson talking about how close it is and everyone getting more panicked in the room, but how can it be in the room? And then finally you get the realization they're in the ceiling and the music, you get the noise. Hicks goes up there and looks and of course he sees them crawling on the ceiling. <laughs> Then it turns into next to one other scene that's higher on this list. One of the best action shootouts in an alien movie, which is just the Marines last stand against the horde of aliens coming into this room. And you get Hudson's last stand where he gets killed and goes out in a blaze of glory and pulled under the grating of the floor. Uh, you get Burke's death as he runs off, you know, scared and he gets killed by an alien. You have more of the welding trying to cut through the lock as Burke shuts and locks the door. And then you get into the tunnel sequence after the whole last stand inside the med lab kind of area. Then it changes from an all out action sound effect kind of thing to where you get the military action score of the drums kind of da -da 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 as they're running through the tunnels which way straight ahead and left Fisher, do you read me come in over you also get some good sound effects of the handgun with gorman he redeems himself after looking incompetent earlier in the movie. Vasquez, of course, is another one, goes out in a blaze of glory. They hold the grenade, you get all the little hissing and all the alien noises as they're closing in on Gorman and Vasquez. Then they blow up the grenade. It, you know, makes a fireball and an explosion. <laughs> And then it rushes through the tunnels, you know, and pushes Newt out, pushes everyone out, and you get the big swell of the explosion. It's just an awesome sequence from that shootout to then everything in the tunnels. And as I mentioned in my number four pick from Alien 3, this scene in the tunnels specifically was the number one scene out of any of these movies that I reenacted as a kid. Like I said earlier, my sisters and I and my cousin, we would play aliens all the time with like our Nerf guns and stuff. And while we reenacted the alien chase sequence from Alien 3, we reenacted the tunnel sequence and this little shootout thing just over and over again. That was our go-to scene more than any other scene in any other movie that I can remember growing up was us playing and pretending we were crouched down running through the tunnels trying to get away from the aliens. So this scene not only holds a huge nostalgic uh, memory and feeling to me, but I really do think it's worthy of being my number three pick on this list to test out your home theater setup. So not just to talk about big action scores and bombastic, you know, sound effects and explosions and all this stuff. The Alien franchise is also extremely well known for tension and mood and suspense and just creating an aura about what you're watching. And so my number two pick is actually going in the complete opposite direction of my last couple picks on this list. And that's gonna be chapter 19 on the Alien 20th anniversary DVD, which is the final scene with Ripley and the alien on the escape shuttle from the Nostromo. Now, again, this is a very mellow scene. It doesn't have a whole lot of action. It doesn't have like big explosions. It doesn't have all kinds of guns firing like in these other picks that I had. It's, it's just a mood and an aura. The just quietness, the stillness, there's no score. It, it's silent, it's quiet and you get the strobe light effect and just the little ticks of the computers and machines on the shuttle. And then Ripley finally notices the alien is there. He's hiding on the escape pod and you don't really realize he's in there because he blends in with all the piping. And then she realizes it and she has to go put the suit on and you get just the heavy breathing and the quiet silentness, you know, of trying not to disturb this alien because you don't know if it can hear you. And she's putting on, you know, the spacesuit and the helmet and loading up her little harpoon gun. And you 
get cuts in between of the alien just kind of moving its mouth and trying to sleep and hibernate in these pipes and everything and then she finally leaves the little spacesuit closet goes sits in the chair you get again her breathing her singing to kind of calm herself buckling herself in flicking all the buttons and you get all this just little ambient noises of all this stuff going on as the tension builds the tension builds because it's will the alien realize she's there And then eventually the alien, you know, wakes up and she shoots the alien out of the airlock and the score kicks in and everything kind of makes it seem like, okay, this is it. The movie's over. But then the gun gets stuck and the alien is hooked and starts to make its way back up through the thruster kind of tunnel. And then she hits the thruster and basically pushes him out into space. You don't really know if he's dead or not but he's gone and you assume the threat is going to be over with and then everything kind of calms down as ripley finally realizes that she's the last survivor that whole ending sequence is just great for the ambiance and the tension and the mood that was created in that scene so to contrast all the action oriented kind of scenes that i picked from number five to number three this number two pick of this final ending sequence of the original Alien, I think is definitely a worthy pick for something that you want to view in your home theater to kind of get a more mellow feeling and just trying to see how your surround sound can handle ambient mood and suspense filled, tension filled kind of uh, material. So for that, I think this is a worthy pick to be number two on my list. All right, we're on to my number one pick. And this was a no brainer for me, honestly. This is my favorite sequence, maybe of any movie ever. Uh, it's definitely my favorite scene from not only the film Aliens, but also the entire Alien franchise. And that scene is the first battle sequence from Aliens. What, what can I say about this scene? I think a lot of people who love Aliens and love this franchise love this scene. And it's usually a top two or top three scene for most people that I've seen online who love this movie and love this franchise. Like I said, what can I say? This is arguably one of the greatest action sequences ever. So you start with seeing the colonist with the chest burster and Ripley reliving the experience of Kane with the chest burster, a nightmare that she's had for all these years. It pays off and you see the chest burster come out. And because they kill the chest burster with all the Marines there, that activates the hive. So all the aliens start to wake up, but you don't know where they're at. You get all the movement. You get the sound of the tracker and Hudson and everyone freaking out, all the Marines freaking out, not knowing where they're at. They're worried. They don't know what happens. And then all of a sudden the aliens come out of the walls and they attack. They're all around. Maybe they don't show up on you for red at all. And then it just opens up, all hell breaks loose, and they just start shooting at everything. Let's rock! Who's firing? God damn it! You know, so they just start shooting everything up. And again, it's one of the coolest action sequences. And you have all the noise and all the background effects of aliens getting shot and killed and all the score and everything and all the panic in everyone's voices. I ordered a whole fire. I'm coming out of the wall. Coming out of the goddamn wall. Look. Uh, All right, man. Hey, Paul. I want you to lay down a suppressing fire with the... That's good. That's great. Right. Hold your fire, fire goddammit. And Gorman trying to talk to a pwn and try and calm things down, but they're completely out of their element. They don't know what to do. And it just builds and builds and builds. And a pwn dies and a bunch of the other Marines die. And then finally they decide they need to leave. But this scene also plays an important role in the film and not just for demo content. And I'm going to deviate slightly here. But this scene also plays out to where Ripley finally goes from being the person who's scared and is trying to face her fears of the aliens that she's dealt with and cryo sleep in these nightmares over all these years and all this time to where she finally decides to take action. And she's the one who then becomes the de facto leader because she realizes Gorman and the Marines are outclassed. 
and outmanned and they don't know what they're dealing with. And so she's the only one willing to take action to go in and save them. So then she goes and takes the APC and drives it and the score kicks up. And you know, as they're trying to stop her from driving it, you know, it crashes off the walls and everything. And then you have the Marines falling back and ever the score and just everything building up. <laughs> So then the APC eventually busts through the little barricade. The aliens are attacking. You get all the cool effects of Drake, you know, just being the last guy, just fighting everything he can, you know, and throwing down his gun, getting the flamethrower. Vasquez shoots the alien, which hits the acid blood on Drake and effectively kills him. The flamethrower sets fire to the inside of the APC. You know, they're trying to then pull everyone in and Hicks trying to get Vasquez to like leave Drake that it's, you know, not worth it. And then finally, when he gets her in there, you get the jump scare of the alien grabbing the doors. Get out of the goddamn door! And then the shotgun in the mouth blows the top of the head of the alien off. Eat this! It's just, it's such a well-constructed sequence of events. The actual home theater surround sound experience is just awesome. It's just an awesome, awesome mix and an awesome scene and is an easy choice for me to be number one on my list for the best scene to really push and test out your home theater setup. All right, so that's gonna do it. Those are my top five scenes that I really think can push and test your home theater. To be honest, the Alien franchise does not lack moments and lack content to test out your home theater. Even just looking at the original four movies and not going into like Prometheus or any of the later releases, just the original four movies have a ton of scenes and a ton of content that ranges from big bombastic action down to very mellow, tense uh, filled scenes, you know, through all the movies. So really you could pick any number of scenes to put on this list. And so definitely leave a comment down below and let me know if you agree with my list or if there's other scenes you would put above these. Cause like I said, this series has a ton of iconic scenes that could definitely be demo quality material. And with that, I am gonna say thank you. This was video number two in my Alien Week themed week of videos. And coming up next, is gonna be a video where I give a rating to every one of the Alien films, and then we're gonna push into a few little videos about Alien Romulus. So thank you again for everyone who's watched my content, who's liked and subscribed, I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video of Alien Week here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.